closer is one of the main stages of the project of all the amount of effort that we have put all the things that we have done all the issues that we faced together all the problems we had all the conflicts that we had in the project would all come to a closer and if we can close the project well we will be able to come out of that project as early as possible otherwise we would have done the entire work but we cannot come out of the project because that formal closer has not happened customer is not happy operations team is not happy management is not happy and we are also not happy either hence project closing becomes very very important we must plan for that closer in the beginning itself hello my name is amit and i am a pmp trainer at adjust education services today we will be talking about the last task of the process domain which is to plan and manage project close we will see the enablers first trying to understand a little bit about the task and then we will see what type of questions can be framed from those enablers while discussing those questions i'll try to give you some tips some tricks some mindset that you will be able to apply when you are taking the actual exam this will help you in understanding what different type of variations in the questions can be there when we are talking about closing a project just like all other tasks that we have covered in the people domain in the process domain we will first look at the enablers trying to understand those and then we will look at the questions let us have a look at the first enabler the first one talks about determining criteria to successfully close the project or a phase okay so how would we know that the project has closed what is that success criteria that would tell us that we can close this project or a phase of the project second talks about validate the readiness for transition we would be transitioning to a different phase we would be transitioning the product the services that we have done to the operations team okay we need to also validate whether the operations team is ready or not whether our team is ready for the next phase or not that's what the second enabler talks about and the third one talks about concluding the activities to close the project okay final lessons learned final retrospective procurement is to be closed you have to pay something to to your vendors whatever is pending finances to be closed you have to submit the invoices to your customer complete all those activities so that you can close the project as well okay so let us see what type of questions can be framed starting with task number 1 determining criteria to successfully close the project the client has not agreed to the closure of the project and refused to sign the final project closure reports claiming that level of testing suggested in the scope of work released with the contract has not been performed so what's happening here the client has refused to sign the project closure report saying that the testing was not done as per the level suggested in the contract suggested in the sow the project team informed the project manager that the testing was done as per by the team as per the sow but they were unable to prove it so this question talks about a situation about an issue where the client is not signing the project closure report it also talks about the reason for that the team could do it but they were not able to prove it that we have done it so something is missing on the proving part now let us see the question what should have been done to avoid this issue right so whenever you see a question that what should have been done to avoid the issue or what would you do to resolve this issue it is very important to understand what the issue is the issue is the refusal to sign and in order to avoid an issue you also need to know the reason of it right what is the reason because of which this happened let's avoid that reason itself the issue will also get avoided so the reason is team is not able to prove something and that is why client is refusing to sign off it's not that the team did not meet the criteria it's not that the team did not conduct the testing that's not an issue the issue is refusal to sign and the reason is team not able to prove that they have done the test so how would that be avoided let us see the options and then we'll decide okay so what should have been done to avoid the issue 
sought expert legal advice on the interpretation of the details in the SOW part of the contract. That's not a problem. Understanding of the contract was not a problem and at least is not mentioned in the question. Right? The problem is that the team has conducted it and they are not able to prove it. So they did understand whatever was written in the contract, whatever was written in the SOW. Hence, we can eliminate this option A. Then we'll go to option B. Hold a meeting with the project team and the client to agree to the further work required to close the project. That is also not an issue. It's not that the team has not done the work. Right? So if the team has not done the work, then we would try to close the project with doing whatever is required to be done. And also, if you notice, the question is asking you the preventive action. How could this have been prevented? The option B is talking about corrective action. How would you solve it now if at all there was a problem? Right? So first of all, it's not the problem of incomplete work. Second, the option is talking about a corrective action. It's not talking about a preventive action, which the question is demanding us to do. This will happen in PMP exam questions. You will see such questions where they're asking you corrective action and the option talks about preventive action. Where they're asking about preventive action and the option is talking about corrective action. We should be very clear with that. Okay? So very clearly, it's not a preventive action. We can eliminate it. Then we go to C. Carried out the validate scope process with the client to, for deliverables handed over. So this one says that whatever deliverables the team has handed over, they should have carried out a validate scope process. Okay, Validate scope process means getting it checked with the customer and whatever you plan in the process. Get it signed off, get it uh, recorded and it would have helped. If you had followed the validate scope process properly, it would have helped in avoiding this issue. The team would have been able to prove it because validate scope process would have an end document. Right? The process would end up with a document and that document could be shown to the customer that yes, we have done it. Your team has signed it off as well. Okay. So this would have helped in avoiding the issue. But is it the best way to avoid the issue? We don't know. Right? So of all the four options, if there are two options which could avoid the issue, we will have to look for the better, better option as well. Let us see D and then decide. Involve the stakeholder in the testing activities to ensure to capture their inputs throughout the project. Now, this is also a very good choice. And if you could involve that stakeholder in the testing activity, it would have helped. But is it better than validating scope process? See, it is always better to understand the process and plan how much of involvement is required. Right? Stakeholder or the client might not be available throughout the testing activity. Right? And this would not be a correct choice. Because why would you want to involve them in the testing activity? Your team would be able to complete it. Once the testing is done, maybe you would want them to check it. Right? So they would do the acceptance testing, they, uh, not even the testing. They would check on the acceptance whether they want to accept it or not. They don't need to be involved throughout the testing activity. Okay? And hence, at this point, C looks better that we follow a process, we follow a plan, rather than suggesting that, okay, let's carry out this solution. Because we don't know whether it will work or not. And also, we see it very clearly that it will be a lot of time-consuming activity for the client and the stakeholder. We don't know whether they'll be ready or not. So would this have avoided the issue? We are not sure if this is a good choice. Okay, It could have avoided the issue, but it might not be a good choice. Might And definitely not better than option C. That is why we are selecting C over D. So in this question, there was an issue provided, issue given, okay, refusal to sign was an issue. The situation also talked about the reason behind it. The reason was the team were not able to prove it. And then the question asked, how would you prevent it, right? How would you avoid the issue? Option A talked about some different issue altogether. So we rejected it or eliminated it. Option B talked about holding a meeting with the project team and the client to agree with the further work required to close the project as a corrective action, not as a preventive action which was asked. That's why we eliminated it. Then option C talked about following a process and option D gave us straight away solution. Okay? We don't know whether that solution is the best solution or not. Following a plan, following a process would be much better. So C is better than D. Now, in this question, you see 
the name of the process mentioned validate scope process okay it's one of the processes of traditional approach which is divided into multiple process group so whenever you study for traditional approach you study for five process groups and 49 processes right initiation planning execution monitoring and controlling and closing and these are the number of processes in those process groups now you don't have to memorize the number for sure you should know that there are 49 processes it would help you in understanding the gravity of the matter but they will not ask you whether it is 49 or 48 right that will not be asked in the pmp exam but you should know about it to be able to understand the traditional approach well okay so you should know these processes what are the tools and techniques what are the inputs and outputs on these processes it will not be asked in the exam extensively okay but if you understand these things well you will be able to solve traditional approach questions well okay to help you in that we will be uh, releasing a video or posting a video next week on 20, 30th november where we'll be explaining all these five process groups and all these 49 processes one after the other so that you are able to understand it well if you want to watch that video and you have not subscribed to our channel yet please do that now you could uh, press the bell icon also so that you get a notification that the video has come and you will be able to see that let us now look at question number two from this particular task which is from the enabler number two validating the readiness for transition let's see what kind of questions can be while planning the project closing activities, a project manager has assigned a responsibility to one of the team members to verify whether the handover of completed system to the operations team for support operations has been successfully completed. A long sentence, but we are not worried about long sentence because we can take a pause of 2-3 seconds and we can understand what this sentence is talking about. First thing that we should note is, where are we in the project? while planning the project closing activity so we are not closing the project we are at the planning stage where we are planning for the project closing activities if you have noticed this probably it would help you in your question why i am saying probably because we don't know what the options are right but it is a good thing to notice where we are in the project and what's happening the project manager assigned a team member to check or to verify whether the handover of the completed systems to operations team was done properly or not. The team member doesn't know how to carry out the activities. If you are following our video, the last task that we did, 2.16, knowledge transfer, there was a similar question that we discussed. It was not about the complete handover, however, it was about knowledge transfer. And then the question was, given the same situation, the question was, which tools and techniques should the team member use? And the answer was meeting, Okay, over brainstorming because we said we need to verify at the closer stage. Okay, so we need to use that proper technique. So if we can meet with the operations team, we will be able to verify. Right now, the question is a little bit different. The question is that when the team member does not know how to carry out these activities of verifying with the operations team if the handover was proper or not, and we are at a planning the project closing activities. What should the project manager suggest? Let us see the options. Brainstorm with the team members to decide the best approach for handover to the operations team. In the previous question of the previous task that we were talking about, that I was just talking about, brainstorming was a technique that this team member could use to verify the knowledge transfer. And we said that brainstorming is not the correct option, meeting is better because brainstorming is done to generate some raw ideas to discuss about what we can do in future, what would be the best approach. Here, brainstorm would help. Right? Here, brainstorming would definitely help because we are discussing with the team members and trying to understand what would be the best approach to for handing over to the operation team and for verifying whether the operation team has received the whatever is to be handled successfully or not. But is it the best choice? See, just because something is correct and just because we had a discussion about brainstorm versus meeting and it is better than meeting, in this case it is helpful, does not mean that it is the best choice as well. And it's a very important understanding for a PMP, uh, aspirants, whoever is planning to take the exam. So you are planning to take the exam, that's why you are watching this video. It is very important for you that just because one option is correct, or just because one option would help us in the in the project or will 
answer the question does not mean that it is the best choice. Right? Information given in the exam would be to select the best choice out of the four. Let us see if we have a better choice or not. If not, then yes, definitely A would be a best choice. But if you do have a better choice, then that option would be better. Let us see. Discuss with the operation team upon closure of the project to understand whether the handover was complete or not. See, the team member is asking for suggestions from the project manager. And project manager is suggesting that do this. Typically, it is not a good choice. Because project manager does not give the solution directly. Right? The best thing would be to facilitate a meeting with the team members and help them figure out the best approach. Because ultimately as a project manager, as a leader, you want your team members to grow as well. You want your team members to develop that problem solving skills, develop those critical decision making skills. Right? And if you give away the answer directly, then they will not develop that. Right? So B is giving away the answer, we can eliminate it. A is where we are doing a participatory decision making, a collective decision making, it is always, always better. Then we go to C. Send a mail to operations head asking if they are satisfied with the handover so that a record can be kept in writing. Again the same thing. Right? The project manager is suggesting a solution. Why is it wrong? Because we don't know whether this is the best solution or not. Right? There can be a good discussion on what should be the approach and then we can decide. So A is saying let's have a discussion and then we will decide. B and C are saying this is exactly what we should do. Right? And we have seen it enough number of times in our uh, discussions through question and answers that just saying that this is the decision that you have to take might or not always be the best decision. Any option that says we will analyze, we will discuss and then we will decide is typically better when there is a general question given. If it was a specific question on how would you solve or what was the best way to solve, then probably we would have decided which is the best decision. But when it is an open-ended question of what should be done, what should be suggested, what is the best thing to do, then analysis is a better choice. Then we go to D. Facilitate a meeting with the project and operations team members to discuss the appropriate handover methodologies. A was looking absolutely correct till now. But now that we have seen D, it looks even better. Why? Because we are also involving another group of people who are going to be a part of this activity. So I am, as a project team, we are going to hand over to operations team. So operations team would take over. So if we can have a meeting with operations team as well, it will give us their perspective as well, which will be better than just discussing within our team. 90% of the times, this option would be a best choice in your exam. That you are brainstorming, you are discussing, you are collectively making a decision, it is always better. But sometimes, if you see an option which says, along with the team members, right, we are discussing with the project team as well, and operations team as well, because they are a part of that. Sometimes operations team, sometimes stakeholders, Sometimes suppliers or vendors could be a part of that discussion. So what you have to see is that in a question, if vendors involvement, suppliers involvement, customers involvement, uh, operations teams involvement is important. And then we have an option where we are calling them, calling the relevant people in the meeting and then discussing it is always better. Right. So in this case, D is better than A. So, a summary of this question, the question was that we are planning the project closing activities. A team member is required to verify whether the handover was proper or not, but the team member does not know how to do that. So, what should the project manager suggest? B and C were the direct suggestion, direct action, direct solution, which should not be done by the project manager as a servant leader, we don't do that. A and B, A and D, sorry, A and D both would help. In A, we are only calling the team members to discuss about the best approach. In D, we are calling the team members and the operations team members as well. So we are calling the relevant people for that discussion. It is always better. That's why D is better than A. Let us move to the, the next enabler, which is the last enabler for this task, concluding the activities to close out the project. Let's see what kind of questions we can see in the exam. A hybrid project with separate traditional and agile teams has just been completed. The project manager is about to begin the project closure with 
project retrospective workshop. Okay, so the project has been closed. It's a hybrid project, and there will be a retrospective workshop at the end of the project, which is a great thing to do. One of the key stakeholders informs the project manager that presence of the project team members in the workshop is not necessary. Okay, so the stakeholder is saying that we have closed the project. Why do you want the team members to be in this workshop? Okay, that's what the situation is. How should the project manager respond? Let's see. Invite the team members to the workshop so that all the lessons learned throughout the project can be captured. Do we want to capture all the lessons learned throughout the project? Yes. So whatever they have noted down, whatever they have created in the lessons learned, we need to consolidate all those things and discuss during the retrospective. Right? So should we invite the team members? Yes. But is it the best thing to do, first of all? Second, if somebody has a concern, some complaint, some information, some suggestion, some recommendation, we cannot ignore that. Right? Yes, this is the best thing to do. But as a project manager, would you ignore somebody's suggestion, information, request, recommendation, whatever it is, order, right? we cannot do that. So there needs to be an option which takes care of that suggestion also. Okay. So let's go to the other choices and see whether we find that or not. If not, then this could be a good choice. Let's look at B. Seek permission to invite the team members as optional participants. This is not helping. Either they should be present or they should be not. And more importantly, if somebody is informing us to not call them, we will tell them that we need them or we don't need them. Either we will agree with them or disagree with them. We cannot say that we will keep it optional. If they come, it's good. If they don't come, it's their loss or our loss. Not a good choice at all. Then we go to C. Ask the project team members to share their lessons learned before the workshop and not attend. This could be a solution, but just sending the lessons learned and not having a discussion on that might not be helpful. Just imagine you are asking some team members to write down the lessons learned and they have given it to you. If you don't have a discussion with them, how do you know what is, what is written? Right? Everybody has a writing skill. Right? Whatever is there in, in their mind, they are not able to translate that into their writing. Everybody has a reading skill. Right? Whatever is written, you may not be able to understand while you are reading it. So as a project manager, you would want to have a discussion to understand what exactly they wanted to say and to verify that yes, you have understood whatever they wanted to say, right? And that is why it is very, very important that we have a discussion rather than asking them to just share our lessons learned, right? So this might not help. Also, it is not taking care of the concern raised by the stakeholder. Let's go to D. Inform the stakeholders that the project team member's presence is important to carry out the successful closure and knowledge transfer. Yes, this is how I should respond. If somebody is asking me to do something which is not a good thing or not the best thing to do in the project, I would tell them that, hey, this is not the right thing to do. Right? And there's nothing wrong in that. Rather than just saying, okay, despite your suggestion, despite your information, I would still call my team or I would call them optionally or I would find out a way to for them to send the lessons learned and then I'll try to somehow mitigate the things not required. Let us first have a discussion with them saying that, okay, whatever you are saying might not be the good thing. Let's have a discussion. And this is what we are talking about here. That you have informed me that it is presence is not required. I'm informing you that the presence is important and let's have a discussion, right? So I'm responding in a way which would help me in managing the project successfully. That is why B is better than A. Okay. So as a summary of this question, the question talked about a hybrid project at the closer stage and talking about a project retrospective workshop that is planned being planned to conduct. The key stakeholder or one of the key stakeholders says that the team members are not required. That was the suggestion. And how would you respond? We said we cannot directly invite because we cannot ignore somebody's suggestions, some information, whatever they are saying. Right? We cannot ignore them. Ignoring them and just doing my activity is not a good choice. So we will not respond like this. We will also not try to figure out an alternative around this because this is an important activity, project retrospective. And team members should come into project retrospective so that they can share their point. They can also learn from what others are sharing. And the team would grow together at the end of the project. That is a very important activity. So we don't have to find a workaround to that. That's why B and C also eliminated. D is better because we are responding in a 
way that we should be responding so that the project is successful and project is successfully closed as well. Right? So D is a better choice. Then we go to the other two questions because we do minimum five questions. Okay. If you want to attempt these questions, similar questions, uh, the link in the description box is given for the mock exams. Okay, I'm not very good at uh, doing advertisement for our mock exams. Okay, so yes, link is given in the description box. There would be an I button, information button that you can click and you can attempt the mock exams. Let us for now focus on the last task that we are talking about. Let's go to the question number four. The customer's project manager has been replaced due to ongoing restructuring in the customer's organization. All right. The replacement has been announced as the performing organization's project manager is about to close the project, possessing a risk to on-time closure of the project. What is difficult in this question? Too many project managers. One is customer's project manager and other is performing organization's project manager. We don't have to be confused about it. There's a client who has their project manager who would be taking care of our project and we are performing them. So there's a representative from their side. Okay, that's it. That representative has been replaced and we are about to close the project and that is when that person has been replaced. So now there's a risk that we may not be able to close the project on time. What should be done to avoid the project closure delay? Right? Although this one is talking about avoiding the project closure delay, avoiding the problem, okay, but currently it's an issue that needs to be solved so that we can avoid the impact. So basically it is talking about a corrective action that we have to take. How would you resolve the issue? That's what they are talking about. Okay, let's see. Issue the payment invoice to the customer in advance. How would this avoid the project closure delay? It's a good thing to do, by the way, for the performing organization. They okay, I know that this project manager is changing or has changed. Let me submit my invoice so that I get paid on time. But this does not avoid the project closure delay. Okay? So we can eliminate this. Then we go to B. Review the project status with the relevant stakeholders to plan. Yes. Right? So an issue has been noticed that the project manager has been replaced. There's a potential delay to that. Okay, and we have to avoid that delay. So what are we saying is, okay, let us have a look at the status together and then we will plan on how we can ensure that there is no delay to the project closure. Which means, new project manager, you will have to inform them about the project, you will have to tell them about the status, you will have to uh, give them all the briefing that is required so that they are up to the pace and they don't ask unnecessary questions delaying your project. So, having a discussion with the relevant stakeholders to plan on how we can ensure project closure on time, given this situation, is a good choice. Then we go to C. Update the stakeholder register. Yes, we would need to do that, but that in itself would not avoid the project closure delay. Okay? So, my stakeholder is changing, a big stakeholder is changing, client's project manager. Okay? So, I would need to update my stakeholder register, but that is not answering the question. And hence, we can eliminate C as well, B is something that we liked and we kept. Now we go to D. Escalate the case to the product sponsor for their intervention. At this point, we don't need that. Right? We don't need to escalate the case to product sponsor because we can handle this. Right? We can have a discussion with the stakeholders, we can plan it. That's why we will not involve our sponsor here. Okay, D is the best choice. As a summary of this question, a new project manager was assigned at the end of the project, okay, which persists a risk of delaying the closure. The question was, how would you avoid that closure? Issuing the payment has nothing to do with the closure, so we can eliminate this. Discussing the status with the relevant stakeholders, wherein the project manager, new project manager would also come into picture, and then planning how we can avoid the delay is a good thing to do. Updating the register would be required to be done, but it does not answer the question. It will not, in itself, avoid the project closure delay. So we can eliminate this. Then we go to D. Uh, escalating the sponsor is not required because we have a, an option where we can solve the problem. So we don't need to escalate it to the sponsor. D is the best choice. Let's move to the last question from this task. The scope of first phase of a project for city council is to replace the street lights with solar lights through the main streets identified in the contract. 
Sometimes if you are not well versed with different industries, you may find some words confusing and you may feel that okay, it is taking a lot of time for me to understand. In such cases, what you need to do is eliminate the specific details and try to think in terms of project management only. Okay, so there's a project where we have to replace something with something. Right? The contract for other areas will be awarded based on the performance in the first phase. So this is clear that there is one phase to the project where we have to do something. Okay, And if we do it well, then we will be awarded the next phase. Otherwise, we will not. Okay? The first phase is completed. But the city mayor does not want to sign the project closure report unless the street lights of mayor's colony is also replaced. Okay, A very typical case scenario that we see if you are connected to political arena, right? that somebody powerful wants some kind of favor in their area as well in order to close the project properly. Not a good activity, probably a fraud, probably an unethical activity. right? We have noticed that. Okay, It's a good thing to notice and let's now solve the problem. What should the project manager do? So in the case where one of the phases is complete but the mayor is requesting for something extra before they can sign up, what should we do? That's the question. And we have also noticed that they are asking for something probably unethical. Let's go ahead. Prepare a final project report and discuss the issue with the sponsor. We could. We have completed the phase. Our job is done. Now somebody is asking something extra. Project respo sponsor's responsibility is to provide money in the project and also to protect us from unnecessary changes. Okay. This could be an unnecessary changes. This could impact something. Right? So having a discussion with the sponsor might not be a bad thing to do. Okay. So we'll keep it. Then we go to B. Contact the city governing council and report the unnecessary request. You okay. see, we have noticed that it is unethical. But do we need to report it to the city governing council is the question. Typically, when we see something illegal, then we must report. At this point of time, okay, it is unethical. We can have a discussion with the sponsor. And if the sponsor says, okay, let us submit the code, let us get some extra money and then we'll do it. Then there's nothing wrong in that as such because the mayor could be the person who is taking the decision. Right? So if they're paying us, we'll do it. Right? So it's not illegal to be reported as of yet. Okay, so we can eliminate option B because we don't need to report this activity. We can just have a discussion with them. Either we agree or we don't agree. Right? That's the case. Let's go to C. Initiate a new project and discuss the request because it came in too late in the project. Yeah, that, that could be a thing. But that is not related to this project. That is related to some other project. Okay, so we could initiate a new project and say, that, okay, you have put in a new request. Let's do that. It is... Good to do. There's nothing wrong in that. Okay, But we have an option where we say, let's have some discussion before deciding. Okay, So do we need to do it in this project itself? What if the sponsor agrees? Because of XYZ reason. And that XYZ reason is that if we perform well, if we can keep the mayor happy, we may get the next phase. Right? So that's a strategic decision and we have already reported it to somebody else. Whenever you see anything unethical being discussed in the question, Okay, you may not be able to take that decision. In this case, you have gone to your higher authority. Sometimes you will go to your legal person. Sometimes you will go to somebody else who could help you in taking that decision. Because you cannot take that decision. Your decision is to see the plan, implement that plan. If there is any change in that, you will have to talk to people who are authorized to make those changes. Right? So in option A, we are talking to somebody who could be authorized. Option B, we are directly reporting that unnecessary request. We don't know whether it is unnecessary or not, just because it is mayor's cap colony. C is talking about initiating a new project, saying that we will take a decision. We cannot take that decision. Definitely, we cannot initiate a new project. Project manager cannot initiate a new project. Project manager will be assigned to an initiated project. Okay, so we can eliminate C. Then we go to D. Submit a quote and schedule plan for extra work suggested by the mayor. Before that, we can have a discussion with the sponsor before we do this. What can we do before going to the sponsor is analyzing 
the impact on schedule cost and other constraints and then we can go to the sponsor but that option is missing in this question right so we can go to the sponsor as such submitting and quote and schedule would be a result of my discussion with the first sponsor if the sponsor agrees or sponsor says okay don't submit the quote we will do that work for free but then we don't need to submit a quote hence d is not a good choice because it is dependent on the discussion of what happens in a and a is a better choice because that is something that we will definitely do all right so in question number 5 the option correct option is a now we have completed all the tasks from process domain and as you see this question it's a good kick start to start thinking about business environment domain as well because the environment around the business would we'll talk about some compliances some changes external some changes internal delivering the value evaluating the value that we are delivering so we are heading into business environment domain which i'll be covering next okay so it's a good precursor to what are we heading into by looking at a process domain question so the process is that if somebody is asking for extra request i will try to talk to people who can help me in taking care of that extra request that's the process so it's a process domain question business domain question would be a little bit different and we'll see that in our task number 3.1 when we start talking about business domain but before i publish a video on business domain what i'm going to do is we'll be compiling all these videos together whatever all the 17 tasks we have discussed the benefit of that compilation is that once you have gone through these tasks one by one now there would be one video with you where you can quickly revise from 1 to 78 there will be 78 questions from process domain so you can revise all those 78 questions together it will put you in a great shape to feel confident that yes i am prepared for process domain okay it will also help you in sharing the videos with your friends with your colleagues whoever is preparing for this one video you can very quickly share So the next video that you will see would be a compilation video. Again, if you have not subscribed, you can subscribe so that you can get a notification on the video that is coming up next. And after that, we will start talking about task number three point one, three point two, three point three, and three point four. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much for your comments also that you have been constantly putting. It is so good to see that so many people are getting benefited from this. And please keep those comments coming. Please keep sharing. whatever your doubts are so that i'll be able to help and if you want to see anything specific in terms of videos explanations i would be more than happy to do that thank you so much for your time i'll see you on the next task which is task number 3.1